So, we've got something special this time. NVIDIA's latest hardware, the DGX Spark. NVIDIA says it's packed the power of a supercomputer into a compact desktop workstation. But can it really live up to that claim? Could this be the start of a new era for personal AI development? Let's find out. The DGX Spark is absolutely beautiful. It has a full metal chassis with a champagne gold finish. Both the front and the rear panels are built with metal foam, reminding me of NVIDIA's DGX A100 and H100. Around the back, you can see so many ports. There are four USB-C ports. The leftmost one is the power supply, supporting up to 240 watts of power. There is an HDMI port, a 10 gigabit ethernet port, and two InfiniBand SFP Plus ports capable of up to 200 gigabits per second. These InfiniBand ports allow multiple DJX Spark units to be easily daisy chained together, allowing them to operate as a unified cluster for serving even larger AI models. The use of USB Type-C for power delivery is a particularly interesting design choice. Comparable systems like the Mac Mini or Mac Studio rely on the standard C5, C7 power connector, which is far more secure but also bulkier. NVIDIA likely opt for USB-C to keep the power supply external, freeing up some of the valuable internal space for the cooling system. But the trade-off is that you'll want to be extra careful not to accidentally tuck the cable loose. The DGX Spark packs remarkable performance for its size and power envelope. At its core is the GB10, NVIDIA's custom Blackwell-based chip designed specifically for this device. It integrates 10 Cortex-X925 performance cores and 10 Cortex-A725 efficiency cores for a total of 20 CPU cores. On the GPU side, the GB10 delivers up to 1 petaflops of sparse FP4 tensor performance, placing its AI capability roughly between an RTX 5070 and a 5070 Ti. The standout feature is its 128GB of coherent unified system memory, shared seamlessly between the CPU and GPU. This unified architecture allows the DGX Spark to load and run large models directly without the overhead of system to VRAM data transfers. With the help of its dual 200 gigabits per second InfiniBand ports, multiple DGX Spark units can be daisy chained together to operate as a small cluster, enabling distributed inference of even larger models. According to NVIDIA, two interconnected DGX Sparks can handle models with up to 405 billion parameters in FP4. However, the only downside of this machine lies in system memory bandwidth. The unified memory is LPDDR5X, offering up to 273 gigabytes per second, shared across both CPU and GPU. As we'll see later, this limited bandwidth will be the key bottleneck in AI inference performance. Now, Let's talk about performance, because this is where things get really interesting. We benchmarked several open-weight large language models on DJX Spark using both SGLang and Olama. These are the same frameworks used by many open-source AI developers today. Running Llama 3.18 b on SGLang, the Spark delivers around 8,000 tokens per second pre-fill and about 20 tokens per second decode at batch one. What's impressive is how linearly it scales all the way up to 368 tokens per second decode at batch 32. That's excellent batching efficiency for a system this compact. On Olama, using GPT-OSS 20B, we saw around 2000 tokens per second prefill 
and about 50 decode tokens per second, which is plenty for local chatbots, assistants, or coding agents. However, when we move to larger models, this is where the architecture reveals its trade-offs. Running GPT OSS 120B on Olama, the Spark hits about 95 tokens per second prefill and 12 tokens per second decode. It is workable, but clearly shows the strain of bandwidth. With Llama 3.1 70B on SGLang, we measured around 800 tokens per second prefill and 2.7 tokens per second decode, which is impressive considering the model size, but roughly eight times slower than the RTX Pro 6000. The 128GB LPDDR5X unified memory provides incredible flexibility, but with only 273GB per second bandwidth, it becomes the main bottleneck when pushing the large scale inference. Still, the fact that a machine this small can even load and run a 70 billion parameter model directly into memory without any system to VRAM transfer is genuinely remarkable. To push things further, we enabled speculative decoding in SGLang using the Eagle 3 algorithm. This approach uses a smaller draft model to predict multiple tokens ahead while the main model verifies them in parallel. With speculative decoding turned on, we observed up to a two times boost in end-to-end -end throughput. For example, Llama 3.18b nearly doubled its decode speed. It's a clever software optimization that helps offset the unified memory bandwidth limits, essentially using algorithmic efficiency to make the hardware feel faster than it is. It's a great example of how modern inference frameworks like SGLang are evolving, not just scaling with hardware, but actively compensating for hardware limitations. So here's the takeaway. The DGX Spark isn't built to compete head-to-head -head with a full-size backward GPU. It's designed to deliver a balanced, developer-friendly experience. For small to medium-sized models, it performs exceptionally well, scaling linearly, running silently, and staying thermally stable even under sustained load. For massive models, you'll notice the bandwidth limits, but the ability to run them at all is an achievement in itself. And with software's features like speculative decoding, its efficiency only gets better over time. Okay, so now we are in the DJX Spark OS environment. Let's open up a terminal window. As you can see, the chip name is NVIDIA GB10 and under memory usage, it says not supported. This is because the GPU doesn't have dedicated VRAM. It's shared with the CPU. If you look at how much system memory it has, it's around 120 gigabytes. Let's open up Tmux and run this sgline command. This command uh, can also be found in our blog and it'll launch an sgline instance on this machine that serves open source models. Let's give it some time to initialize. Yeah, so after a while, you'll see that the server is fired up and ready to roll. At this point, you can start sending requests to this SGLang server. You send them in the exact same format as the OpenAI chat completions. The first request will take some time, but later requests will be fast. As you can see, when asked how many letters are in the word SGLang, it correctly returns six. Now that SGLang is warmed up, let's give it some harder questions. Like, how many R's are in the word strawberry? And it answered wrong, as expected, because the model is Llama 3.1, which is from a while ago. So now that SGLang is fired up on our local machine, 
we can use a chat UI such as this open web UI to connect to the local server and we can chat with the local model. We added a personality in this open web UI called SGLang Jump. It is our mascot of SGLang. You can see the chat is actually pretty smooth and you can ask it very specific technical questions about how SGLang works and it will try to explain it to you. So another use case is that you can run the GPT OSS model locally with Olama and connect it to your favorite IDE to run local coding agents. As you can see, this is the homepage of Olama. You click download and then copy the command to the terminal window. Give it some time for the installation. Okay, now you can see that the NVIDIA GPU is installed. This is pretty important because it will use CUDA instead of CPU only inference. And you can execute this command that downloads GPT OSS 20B. It will download this 13 gigabytes model. It's actually pretty fast on my local machine because I've already downloaded it. So now you can open up an IDE such as Z and it will immediately detect the model you downloaded. I have a lot of models there because I've downloaded them for testing. But let's select the GPT OSS 20B and uh, ask it to do something. Yeah, and now speed up the video a little bit because this really took a while. Yeah, so after quite a while, you can see that it successfully created a Next.js project and created a landing page inside it. So, what do we take away from all this? The DGX Spark isn't built to replace your RTX 5090 or data center rack. It's built to make AI development accessible, efficient, and beautifully simple. Its unified memory architecture lets you run large models seamlessly, and its ready-to-use software ecosystem means you can start experimenting right out of the box. Of course, there are limitations. The LPDDR5X bandwidth caps its raw performance, and the ARM ecosystem still lags behind for certain apps, especially games. But for researchers, engineers, and AI enthusiasts who want data center power without data center noise, this machine is a glimpse of the future. It's a supercomputer for your desk, and it's every bit as cool as it looks.